Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson Nationwide. The phone number want to be on the program, 877-973-7425. We got a Supreme Court pick we will get to. Uh, President Biden will address the nation later today. I'm not carrying this live. I told you all weeks ago who it was going to be. I was right. It was that obvious. Now, we've got a special guest out of the gate today, uh, the senator from the great state of Arkansas, Tom Cotton. Welcome to the program. How are you? Good morning, Eric. I'm doing well. I hope you and all your listeners are well, too. Yeah, we sure are. Now, out of the gate, you I want to talk to you, obviously, about Ukraine. Uh, you and the Senate Republicans have been pretty united on this. I thought it was interesting. The number of stories, New York Times, Political Washington Post on the great divide within the Republicans and all they could point to were some statements Senator Hawley had made. And and he, too, is is out saying we need to be more forceful against Russia on this. The United Republican front here. And it actually seems like the Democrats are the ones who are pretty divided on how hard the president should go after Joe, uh, Vladimir Putin. Yeah, Eric, uh, Vladimir Putin is a ruthless dictator who has launched a premeditated, unprovoked, naked war of aggression. Uh, And I can tell you that uh, there is certainly no love loss in my state, as I've spoken with Arkansans this week, about Vladimir Putin in general. And of of course, um, for the war that that he launched this week, Uh, we can see a bully uh, from a mile away in Arkansas, and we know how to stand up to one as well. Um, and we are cheering on and celebrating the brave Ukrainian people like those Ukrainian border guards uh, on Snake Island yesterday who told that Russian warship what it could go do to itself. <laughs> yes. Or the, the moms and dads in Kiev who are now not just arming themselves with AK-47s but making Molotov cocktails. Uh, in the spirit of, of Winston Churchill, who had planned, if Germany had invaded Great Britain, to tell every British citizen, you can always take one with you. And I certainly hope that a lot of Ukrainians take more than one Russian with them if it comes to that. Uh, Unfortunately, we got to this point because of a year uh, of weakness and concessions by Joe Biden. And in many cases, those concessions were ratified, encouraged, defended by Democrats in the United States Senate. Um, Democrats who, for four years, had discovered their inner cold warrior about Russia, but the minute the former president left office and the current president took office, reverted back to their traditional dovish ways, always trying to find a way to conciliate with Russia. Now, let me ask you about that, because there's a New York Times story that has hit this morning that the Biden administration tried to use China to persuade Russia, shared with them information the Biden administration has, and now it appears the Chinese actually shared that information with Russia and uh, told the Russians they wouldn't do anything to stop them. Eric, I can't comment on specific reports about unclassified or about classified information, but I, I will say that the Biden administration's policy of last four months, whatever you think about it, obviously failed. Mm -hmm. Um, We all saw this invasion coming going back to October when those of us on the Intelligence Committee started seeing the reports of the Russian buildup. We urged the Biden administration to take tougher action at the time uh, to deter Vladimir Putin from this invasion. Um, That action did not include sharing the intelligence with Beijing and pleading with them to go ask Vladimir Putin to hold off. Frankly, it didn't include sharing information with the world about all the potential false pretexts that Vladimir Putin might use. I don't object to that tactic, but I never thought that it would work because Vladimir Putin is, again, a shameless and ruthless dictator who has wanted to reunite Ukraine with Russia for 20 years. This is not just a recent development. It has nothing to do with NATO membership, which was not happening, or military exercise, which were not happening. This is about Vladimir Putin's longstanding imperialist ambitions, on the one hand, married up to, on the other hand, what he perceived as weakness and a moment of opportunity. Well, he does. And I mean, if if we listen to Vladimir Putin going back to the early 2000s when he was saying NATO needed to be scaled back, gotten rid of, uh, he wanted a Russian sphere of influence. He's been assassinating opponents on NATO soil. He's been uh, killing and jailing dissidents in his country. It seems like uh, not just us, but a lot of Western leaders 
have pretended that he wasn't saying and doing the things he was as uh, the West has gotten further and further dependent on Russian fuel and Russian natural gas in order to provide for their energy as they've gone to solar and windmills. Yeah, Eric, uh, dictators like Vladimir Putin rarely have secret plans. They rarely conceal their intentions in the same way that Adolf Hitler made it perfectly clear in the early and mid-1930s what he planned to do. Vladimir Putin made it perfectly clear as well. I know a lot of my friends uh, on the left, Democratic senators, um, media types, were shocked by Vladimir Putin's speech on Monday night. There's nothing shocking about that, Eric. As you probably know, he published a long essay last summer on exactly the same points entitled On the Historic Unity of the Russians and Ukrainians. I mean, what did they think he was going to do if that was his view? He started marshalling troops on Ukraine's border just a few weeks after the debacle in Afghanistan, and he continued to build troops until he got to almost 200,000 last week. Obviously, he had announced his intent, and still uh, too many Western leaders weren't clear-eyed about it. And as you say, they haven't been clear-eyed for 20 years. Um, a lot of them, frankly, have been bought off by Vladimir Putin in Russia. I mean, look at Gerhard Schroeder, the chancellor of Germany uh, in the first part of this century. For the last 15 years, he has been enriched by Russian companies like Gazprom and Rosneft. Um, and that's the case as well with a lot of German and Italian industrialists who are today are still running off to their governments, pleading with them not to impose sanctions on Russia's oil and gas sector, not to kick Russia out of the international payment system known as SWIFT. Because Vladimir Putin has sadly, but rightly calculated, that plenty of Europeans can simply be bought off. Uh, Ukrainian independence and freedom be damned. Well, now let me talk to you about the sanctions. Uh, if I remember right, and someone told me this morning that uh, that Donald Trump kicked the Iranians off the SWIFT system, even though there were objections from some of our allies. Uh, and if that's true, why can't? Joe Biden, and maybe it's not true, but I'm just concerned. It seems like getting them out of the SWIFT system actually makes a lot of sense, and yet we're not doing it. Yeah, we have the power to do that. It's because Joe Biden has handed a veto pen over to the Europeans on sanctions. Uh, And again, if you do that, you know that Vladimir Putin will never feel what should be the most severe consequences, because too many Europeans are beholden to Russian money and Russian oil and gas. Um, but he said it openly yesterday at that press conference, Eric. He said the Europeans didn't want to do that, so he ac- uh, acquiesced to them. Likewise, on oil and gas payments or oil and gas exports, why are we not uh, sanctioning their oil and gas exports? The number one funder of Russia's uh, government. Well, the reason is that too many of our European partners are beholden to Russian oil and gas. And for that matter, we import 600,000 barrels of oil from Russia a day. If we just opened the Keystone Pipeline, that thing would have imported more than 800,000 right. a day from, from Canada. Um, to say nothing of the fact that Joe Biden's reckless energy policies over the last year have already driven the price of oil up near $100 a barrel and therefore driven the price of gas to $3.50. No, wait, look, wait, wait, it, wait, wait, wait. I need to interrupt you there because I specifically heard Jen Psaki yesterday say that it was the Ukrainian invasion that caused oil and gas prices to go up, not nothing else. <laughs> Look, I mean, uh, Joe Biden and his mouthpiece and Democrats running for uh, office this fall, like Raphael Warnock, they're all going to blame inflation on Vladimir Putin invading Ukraine. Every American knows that we are suffering record high inflation for months before this invasion. If we wanted to address that and have the freedom of action to impose severe penalties on Vladimir Putin, we shouldn't have shut down drilling on federal lands. We shouldn't have shut down new leases uh, and exploration rights on federal lands and water. We shouldn't have nominated someone to the Federal Reserve, Eric, who has written publicly about the desire to use the Federal Reserve's banking power to cut off oil and gas companies from financing. Uh, These uh, are the policies of deluded ideologues. And Americans are very sober and practical about these matters. They know that at a time when you have a ruthless dictator using energy as a weapon, then we shouldn't make ourselves beholden to him or for that matter anyone else. On the contrary, not only should we take care of our own energy needs, we should and we can produce enough oil and gas that we can supply much of Europe's needs. So while while we're talking, a friend of mine uh, up your way, who I believe you know just sent me this, uh, said you might not have seen this. Uh, This is from the office of 
foreign assets control. And, and let me just read you this paragraph. For purposes of this general license, the term related to energy – uh, of those things that are that we're going to give Russia a pass on uh, include the extraction, production, refinement, liquefaction, gasification, regasification, conversion, enrichment, fabrication, blah 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 of unfinished oils, natural gas, liquids, petroleum products, natural gas, or other products capable of producing energy, including coal and wood and agricultural products. That sounds like i mean that all russia is is a giant gas station and and we're not closing the doors to the gas station with a lot of coal and trees as well yes. eric and uh joe biden and the deluded left in his party wants to stop all production of oil and gas and coal in our country yet they won't even sanction the man who launched this naked war of aggression and they'll go and beg and plead with opec countries to keep production up we didn't have to do this to ourselves. We have a suicidal energy policy, and we need to reverse it now. And we need to reverse it for the sake of families who are struggling to heat their homes this winter and to pay their gas bills uh, when they go to the pump, but also to provide ourselves more freedom of action in a dangerous world. Look, there's more than enough oil and gas in this country, combined with our friends in the Persian Gulf or Australia or other uh, friendly nations, to support Europe's energy needs. Mm-hmm. They don't have to depend on Russian gas. But we've made the decision to step out of that uh, market, and we need to reverse that decision immediately. I, I, I do have to sit here and chuckle a little bit as I'm reading the rest of this language here. We're also allowing them to export their uranium, just 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 so we know. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, so, I, I mean, if, if you were the president right now, I mean, what other steps would you be taking – to try to deal with the situation and get the Russians out of Ukraine? Well, if that were the case, Eric, we would have never reached this point in the first place. As I said, this started from the beginning of the Biden presidency. First off, I think Vladimir Putin had long ago taken the measure of Joe Biden during his vice presidency, and it only become more doubtful about his resolve uh, once he became president. But just look at some of the early actions of the Biden presidency. Vladimir Putin's number one foreign policy priority for years was to get an extension of the New START Treaty, which is a one-sided arms control deal with the United States. The former president refused to give him that extension unless he made concessions in return. He didn't. He waited out President Trump. Joe Biden took office. A week later, he got that one-sided extension. Mm -hmm. A couple couple months later, he got his second foreign policy uh, priority fulfilled. Again, with no concessions whatsoever, Joe Biden lifted the sanctions on the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline from Germany to Russia that President Trump had imposed. He just revoked the waiver of those sanctions this week, tacitly admitting that he'd made a mistake. Consider the colonial pipeline hack, Eric. Uh, I mean, Joe Biden's response to that was anemic at best. And then he went off to a summit in Geneva in June with Vladimir Putin, giving him unneeded, unwarranted uh undeserved prestige and gave him a list of critical infrastructure that he pleaded with Vladimir Putin not to attack in the future. Well, really what that is, just a target list by omission. Right. You know, they don't, they didn't include talk radio on that list. I bet. So they told Vladimir Putin talk radio and every other industry that's not on this list, feel free to attack with impunity. And then of course, not just relative to Russia, but our standing in the world generally was the utter humiliating retreat that Joe Biden authored in Afghanistan in August. And it, it was just a few weeks later that Vladimir Putin began to build up his combat troops on the border of Ukraine. That's not a coincidence. No, it's not. Senator, I, look, I could talk to you a lot longer about this. I know you're busy and, and I got a commercial break to hit, but I sure appreciate you taking the time to stop by. This has been very, very informative. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good to be on with you. Take care. Senator Tom Cotton of Arkansas. He's on the Senate Intelligence Committee, Senate Armed Services Committee. Uh, he's taken a firm line for a number of years on Vladimir Putin and has been calling out Western powers for being bought off by and diluted by Putin. Figured it would be worth you all hearing from him himself today. When we come back, I do need to get into that grand Biden contradiction that he was talking about, that all of Biden's staffers said that the purpose of the sanctions were to deter the invasion. And then yesterday, Joe Biden came out and denied that was ever the case. Oh, yes, I got the receipts. The phone number, if you want to be a part of the program, 877-973-7425. I just want to reiterate some of the things Senator Tom Cotton, who sits on the Senate Intelligence 
committee pointed out, one, Joe Biden could unilaterally block the uh, Russians from the SWIFT system, that is the system that handles all the banking transactions on the planet. Uh, Joe uh, Donald Trump actually did that to the Iranians against European objections. Joe Biden, however, has chosen to give the European allies a veto over it. Additionally, uh, the New York Times is reporting that the Biden administration presented classified American intelligence to the Chinese to try to get them to discourage Russia, and instead the Chinese passed on the intelligence to the Russians. And then there's this. I need to play you this audio. Uh, from Dalip Singh, uh, Reuters Steve Holland asks Dalip Singh, he's the White House Deputy National Security Advisor, uh, targeting the Russian energy industry is totally off on the table. Is that what you're saying? The targeting the Russian in- energy industry is totally off the table. Is that what you're saying, Dalip? What I'm saying is that our measures were not designed to disrupt in any way the current flow of energy from Russia to the world. Now, Um, We have also said we are going to cut off Russia's access to cutting-edge technology. That technology can be used across many sectors. Uh, And and so as it relates to Russia's long-term productive capacity, um, we are seeking to degrade that capacity, but nothing nothing in the short term as it relates to energy. What's the point then? What's the point? But also this. I want to play you this. I'm going to talk over this. This is Joe Biden at his press conference Yesterday. No one expected the sanctions to prevent anything from happening. It has to show this is going to take time. No one expected the sanctions to prevent anything from taking uh, from happening. That's Joe Biden yesterday. Here now is Jake Sullivan from last week, the National Security Advisor. The president believes that sanctions are intended to deter. And in order for them to work to deter, they have to be set up in a way where if Putin moves, then the costs are imposed. But if you believe this is now Kamala Harris. Putin has made up his mind. What leverage do you really have? Why not put those sanctions in place now? The purpose of the sanctions has always been and continues to be deterrence. The deterrence effect of these sanctions is still a meaningful one, especially because remember also, we still sincerely hope that there is a diplomatic path out of this moment. The purpose Now, this is Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State. To the sanctions in the first instance is to try to deter Russia from going to war. As soon as you trigger them, that deterrent is gone. And until um, uh, the last minute, uh, as long as we can try to bring uh, a deterrent effect to this, uh, we're going to try to do that. Our hope is... Now, this is Jen Psaki, the White House Press Secretary. That uh, Putin will decide to de-escalate, uh, that he will feel uh, the threat of the uh, sanctions, what the impact will be on the Russian economy, uh, on the Russian people, on the people who surround him. Uh, they are meant to have a deterrent impact. That- You've got the Secretary of State, the National Security Advisor, the Vice President of the United States, and the White House Press Secretary all saying they were meant to deter, and then the president yesterday. No one expected the sanctions to prevent anything from happening. It has to show this is going to take time. What the hell is happening at the White House? What is going on? Who is not talking to whom? The president just directly contradicted his entire national security team who said the sanctions were meant to deter, and now he says no one thought they were going to do What? What is going on here? The man is out of his mind. Please, someone, please send in the grown-ups. Welcome to the program. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number is 877-973-7425. Let's go to the phone. Stephen, you're going to be up next. Welcome. Uh, Yes, sir. I got a a comment for you, Eric, and then I'm going to let you follow up and see what you think. But I think that uh, Biden's a lot smarter than people are giving credit for I think he's pulling the wool over all our eyes. I think the leader of Ukraine was getting ready to out him and his son for all the dealings that he was having back in his past. And I think he's in the bed with with Putin, and he's killing two birds with one stone. He told Putin to invade Ukraine. It takes care of that leader. It drives oil prices up to record levels, which he can blame uh, his 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 bad policies in regard to inflation and all that. Um, he, so he, he's really going to kill two birds with one stone. 
by getting rid of the leader. So Putin now has Ukraine, or will get Ukraine, who has a lot of resources, nuclear power, oil, natural gas, that Putin is going to be at his disposal, that he's going to be able to sell to all the other people that are in bed with Putin, Germany, um, and all the other European countries that's, you know, in NATO. And they're going to be buying oil from, from Putin, which is going to make him rich. Because the sanctions that, that Biden really did didn't really affect anything. It didn't change nothing. So I think that, I think Biden's a lot smarter than, than we give him credit for. I think he knows how to play the game. And the Republicans are just sitting there their chest going, well, I can't believe he's doing this. But he's doing it, and nobody's saying anything or doing, you know, really what needs to be done to, you know, to stop him. Well, Stephen, I, I, that, that's, that's an interesting theory that it's all about Hunter Biden. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. I'm sorry. I couldn't help. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. Stephen, I'm sorry. I hope you could take a laugh. I, no, I don't think this has to do with the Hunter Biden stuff. I, I really, I really, genuinely, truly don't think it has anything to do with the Hunter Biden stuff. Uh, if he, I mean, if he was going to out Hunter Biden, wouldn't he have done it with Trump? Because remember, he wanted javelin missiles from Trump. He he wanted javelin missiles from Trump, and Trump wanted the information on Hunter Biden, and he said there was nothing to give. And uh, Trump, they Congress wound up sending the javelin missiles, but uh, w- wouldn't he wouldn't he have done it then? As opposed to he's now surrounded by the Russians uh, because he's now going to give it up when it doesn't matter. Because why would he wait for Joe Biden to become president of the United States of America to then go after Joe? Don't you want to stop Joe Biden from becoming president as opposed to we're going to wait for Joe Biden to become the most powerful man on the planet. And now we're going to out Hunter Biden. I that. That one doesn't work for me. I'm sorry. Now, there was a point where we we have to focus on something else Stephen said, and that is that, yes, uh, Putin is going to get very, very rich selling oil and natural gas and uranium and wood to the world market. He's also going to divert a lot of his natural gas to China. He's going to divert a lot of his natural gas to China, uh, and they're gonna they're gonna have a fuel day there. Now, I have to move on to other stuff. I'm, we will work our way back to Ukraine. I will keep you up to date with the developments. We have a Supreme Court nomination coming in a little while. We know who it is, Katanji Brown Jackson. But I got to talk about something else. And if you're in Georgia. In particular, y'all need to listen to this. This is important for everyone in the state of Georgia. But it's important for all of you wherever you are. I don't care what state you're in. If you are in Oregon or Oklahoma, if you're in Ohio or Arizona, I need you to listen for a moment. I want to play you some audio from Janet Howell. She is a state legislator in Virginia. Janet Howell is on a Senate Education Committee in Virginia, and her committee is considering a bill to ban the use of critical race theory in framing the education objectives of the students. And the bill sponsor for the House House of Delegates in Virginia says one of the things they want the kids to understand and to learn in school 
is the Declaration of Independence, that all men are created equal. That's what they want to teach in the schools of Virginia, that all men are created equal. This is Janet Howell, a Democrat in the state Senate. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Senator, please go ahead. I find the comment that all men are created equal being a example of what we should move toward sort of somewhat offensive. The person who wrote that owned slaves. That's a Democrat in the state Senate in Virginia, Janet Howell. I find the phrase all men are created equal somewhat offensive because the man who wrote it owned slaves. Remember, in critical theory, uh, you have to subvert the dominant paradigm, and you must do so by changing words and, and not taking them at, their, at, at the objective truth, but at your truth. And so if a man who owns slaves wrote that all men are created equal, he must not mean it. Therefore, the phrase itself is bad. That's critical theory. Critical theory is polluting schools across America. In Georgia, a number of the uh, metro Atlanta area school districts, the Cobb County School District, the Gwinnett County School District, Forsyth County School District, and others, uh, they are embracing critical theory. Some of them are doing, remember back during Common Core fights, they would just change the name. Well, it's not Common Core, it's Commonwealth Core. It's different. So what they're doing now, they're calling it DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, but it is Common Core, or not Common Core, it's, it's critical theory. But they say, well, how can you oppose diversity, equity, and inclusion? They're just changing the name, but it's still critical theory. It still teaches black children they're oppressed and white kids that they're oppressors. Around the country, there are efforts to adopt school choice, to embrace school choice. Oklahoma has an effort, and its Speaker of the House of Representatives is blocking it from a vote. In Georgia, a bipartisan group, get this, in Georgia, Yes, a bipartisan group in the state legislature is advancing school choice. Black Democrats in the state of Georgia in the legislature are supporting an effort to bring school choice. Why? Because they finally saw it and they've had enough. They were home with their kids during lockdown. They saw the education their kids are getting and they're horrified. And a group of black Democrats are joining some of the most conservative members of the state house representatives in Georgia to support school choice. But the Speaker of the House of Representatives in Georgia, David Ralston, has decided to side with the Wokes and Stacey Abrams and is blocking it from getting a vote. Now, he's doing so because a number of Republicans in the state House of Representatives are opposed to school choice in Georgia. So I've turned on the action portal, and I want you to call your state representative in Georgia if you live there. I've got about 20 radio stations in Georgia, all across the state, from rural parts to urban parts. And I want you to call your state representative and demand they support school choice and demand the Speaker of the House hold a vote on it. If you text the word ACTION to 55444, you'll get a link back. You'll get a link back. If you follow through on that link, if you have Twitter, you can send a tweet. But more importantly, there's an option for you to call. Forget email. Call them. Call your state representative. I've made it very easy for you. Here's what you do. Text the word ACTION to 55444. You'll get a link back on your phone, and you click the link. You put in your information, and you can get a call back from me. You'll hear my voice. You put in your zip code, and I'll connect you to your state representative in Georgia. And all you do is say, don't side with Stacey Abrams and the Wokes. Support school choice. But more importantly, you got to tell the Speaker of the House to put it to a vote. So here's what happens. I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this on my cell phone so those of you who understand. And those of you nationwide, when I tell you to join my army of activists, this is what I'm talking about. This is the power that you guys have, and we'll, we deploy it nationwide, not just in Georgia. But for right now, go to, you text to the number 55444, the word ACTION. And when you text that word action, you'll get back a link. 
It may take it a minute to show back up. But when you get that link, it'll go to the portal where you can, so many people are using it right now, it's taken me a minute to get the link back. But you'll get the link back and you click the link and you can call your state representative in Georgia. You call them and tell them, support school choice. You call them and tell them, don't stand with the wokes, stand with the parents and the kids. You call them and you tell them, it's time to fight on this and stand up to the speaker. It's time. So the link just came back for me. And it says, support HB 999. What's your street address? I put in my street address and zip code. And then I put in my phone number. I'm not telling you all my phone number. It says, find my legislators. And then there's a little phone icon. You click the phone icon and you'll call, you'll see, call my official. And when you do that, You'll get some talking points. You'll get a call in progress, and then it will connect you to your state representative. Click the phone icon if you don't want to send the tweet. But this is important. I don't just want to complain to you about school choice around the country. Oklahoma, those of you in Oklahoma, KRMG, a buddy of mine's given me the information. I'll set this up for you guys as well so that you'll be able to take action too in Oklahoma to advance school choice. I got affiliates around the nation where this issue is coming up. It's time to use the army of activists on this issue. Y'all just imagine this. You've got critical theorists in your public schools. The schools have been shut down. Around the country, Republicans are winning this issue. Republicans are using this issue to win. And in states like Oklahoma and Georgia... The Republicans are the obstacles. The speakers of their houses of representatives are the obstacles. They're the ones denying kids a good education. They're the ones standing with Stacey Abrams and the Wokes and the teachers unions. In fact, I saw a report out that some of the major national teachers union groups have given money to causes that Speaker Ralston in Georgia and the Speaker in Oklahoma care about, trying to buy their protection It's time to take action. If you live in Georgia, text the word ACTION to the number 55444. Call your state representative today. If you see them at church on Sunday, don't give them wiggle room. Say, you got to support school choice. You got to make the speaker put it to a vote. You've got black Democrats in Georgia willing to side with the conservative white guys in the state house. That's how big an issue this is. How are you letting this historic moment slip you by? Your vanity and ego should not be bigger than your desire to serve the parents and children of your state. You, the voters, you, the listeners of this station, must take action to make this happen. You must fight for your children and the children of your relatives and the children of your friends and family. Text the word ACTION to 55444. If you live in Georgia, you will get this link back. It won't work if you're in North Carolina or Oklahoma or wherever. I promise you, though, now that we've got a nationwide footprint, we'll deploy these state by state as they're needed. They're needed today in Georgia. Text ACTION to 55444. Hello there. It is Eric Erickson here. The phone number 877-973-7425. I, I feel bad. I, I played that audio with Stephen. I couldn't help myself, though. Conspiracy theories of, yeah, I just, in any event. Um, Have you all heard some of the awesome stories of the Ukrainian people. One of the tragedies, they will be remembered. There'll be a movie made of them, the heroes of Snake Island. Snake Island, an island in Ukraine. It's a border territory. There were 13 Ukrainian soldiers in a Russian warship. Signals to them and says, we have you surrounded. You, you surrounded. You must surrender. And on the open mic, you hear someone say to his commander, should I tell them to go F themselves? And you hear the guy say yes. And he says, Russian warship, go F yourself. And then you hear the Russian commander say, opening fire. 
and then you hear the explosion and they all died. All of them, not a soul surviving on the island. Dying, fighting for their country. A grandmother saw Russian soldiers on the street in her town in eastern Ukraine and berated him for coming into her country and handed him sunflower seeds and said to please keep them with him as his corpse rotted in Ukraine, the sunflowers would grow. A soldier at a border pass over the river, they mined it and he knew that the mines wouldn't go off in time. And so he detonated them with his body to keep the Russian invaders out. Now the Russians have made it to Kiev. Kiev. If you're wondering why so many people started saying Kiev instead of Kiev, K-I-E-V is the Russian spelling for Kiev. K-Y-I-V is the Ukrainian spelling for it, and they pronounce it Kiev. And nobody wants to be on the side of the Russians right now. So they're all saying Kiev. Good for them. I'll try to remember to say Kiev. I want chicken Kiev. That doesn't sound right, does it? So okay, so we'll do chicken Kiev, but we'll we'll also we'll we'll keep with the Kiev as the city. When we come back, uh, I we need to talk about the Supreme Court. I have actually put off all week long. There's there was a story in Bloomberg and massive outrage from the left that the Supreme Court's about to take up a bunch of culture war cases. They're only doing so because for years the left ran to the courts to try to get victories. And now the right is ready to roll back those judicial victories and make them fight it out in the legislature. And more and more states out there, in anticipation of the Dobbs case, possibly uh, upholding the 15-week abortion ban in Mississippi without actually getting rid of Roe v. Wade, are starting to put in place 15-week abortion bans. And by the way, a majority of the public, a majority of women in the country support those laws. You would probably never know that from the way the media discusses it. But the culture war comes to the Supreme Court as Joe Biden keeps his word. He appoints a black woman to the U.S. Supreme Court. Is she the most qualified? Uh, we can't say because he didn't want to consider everyone. Only the only a, a black female candidate. Uh, but Katanji Brown Jackson, she's actually was put onto the U.S. Uh, circuit for D.C. on a bipartisan vote. The Democrats all reacting favorably to her, including Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema. She's probably going to be confirmed. I'll tell you what I know about her when we come back right here on The Eric Erickson Show. We'll take your calls as well, 877-973-7425. It's 2022. Things are still crazy. Yeah, things haven't settled down. And now you got the Federal Reserve and interest rates. you got the economy. you got inflation. A lot of banks won't even return your phone call. Let's say you're a small business and you need a loan for $750,000 or higher. You see an opportunity where banks, they don't even want to see you. You want to buy a building, you want to build a building, reach out to the Frost family at First Liberty Building and Loan. They've been helping small businesses become big businesses since the 1990s. They want to help you if they can. So spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a good fit for them and they're a good fit for you. Their website is firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. Again, you need a loan, $750,000 or higher. You're a small business and you see an opportunity to grow. Share it with the Frost family and see if they can help you. Firstlibertyga.com. That's firstlibertyga.com. First Liberty Building and Loan can help businesses nationwide become bigger businesses. The regular season is heating up. New stars are emerging, and that means more opportunities to win up to 25 times your cash on prize picks. The most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection on a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's that easy. Let it fly to turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Watch your favorite players and get paid doing it this basketball season. See your entries make progress during the game or make new entries for the second half in the fourth quarter. Three pointers, assists, rebounds, and everything in between are yours for the taking. Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit of up to $100. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code GET100. That's code GET100 on Prize Picks for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less, it's that easy.